What up gamers, welcome to our first official video for Battlefield 5. It's been a long time coming it seems since the closed alpha was a couple weeks ago. So if you didn't happen to catch it on Twitter or you weren't on Reddit yesterday, DICE development director Ryan McAuther did the community a solid and went on Reddit to conduct an AMA over any questions regarding the company in Battlefield 5. What is a company? How does it work? I'm Sir Mav. Let's get into it. So if you didn't already know, as we all traverse through the world of Battlefield 5, it all starts with your company. A company is simply a place where you as a player can create and customize your soldiers, weapons, and vehicles for the battlefield. This covers the way they look aesthetically all the way to how they play. The customization features for your company will evolve as we follow the tides of war. So as Ryan put it, the company is your personal collection of soldiers, vehicles, and weapons. You will be able to progress and customize each of these to fit your personality and playstyle. As we go through all the questions answered in this AMA, we gain a more definite understanding of how this system will work in Battlefield 5. So here's what I gathered from all the answers. From what I gather, the devs for Battlefield 5 truly want to make this a unique experience for the player and allow you to express your individuality through how you customize your company. So think of your company as a locker of soldiers, weapons, and vehicles at the palm of your hand. Your company will have two factions, the Allies and the Axis Powers. Within these factions, you can have multiple planes and tanks with duplicates of each. How many duplicates is yet to be confirmed, but likely not an infinite amount. This goes the same for soldiers and weapons, and each of these can be specialized by the choices you make and dependent on what playstyle you're looking for. You will be able to customize your soldiers visually by their face, helmet, face paint, jacket, and pants. Weapons will have 5 to 7 part slots to add your choice of visual customization and vehicles such as planes and tanks will also have multiple slots to customize from. It's important to note that all these slots you choose to customize for each unit and weapon in your company are purely cosmetic and should in no way give you an advantage on the battlefield. So now you got the look, but don't forget about playstyle. How do we progress our assault soldier to become a silent assassin? Now, I'm speaking metaphorically here, I don't know if you are capable of creating that or not. In Battlefield 1, we progress by playing a specific class, acquiring war bonds and using those war bonds to purchase weapons and gadgets. Certain guns required a class to be a certain level before we could obtain that weapon and use it on the battlefield. Later, they implemented certain tasks for different DLC weapons in order to unlock them. The company system will work in a similar way, except you will now be able to choose what you progress towards. So let's take an example of a soldier. So in our company we will create a new soldier to progress such as say a support class. From what I gathered from Ryan this is how it should work. As we play in this class we will eventually level up our soldier and gain access to what Ryan referred to as combat roles. Combat roles are simply the features you want this soldier to advance towards to accommodate your playstyle. Ryan stated that there will be both offensive and defensive combat roles within the skill tree basically making a point that the team wants to reward players for holding flags as much as capturing them where possible. So if you're into fortifying an objective and hunkering down, or you want to assault every single flag that falls to the enemy, there's a combat role for that. Weapon play also comes into mind when considering a combat role. For instance, attachments for a gun can be specific to certain combat roles. Ryan gave an example of a bipod on an MMG. If you want that attachment on your gun, you're going to have to spec your soldier to a specific combat role to obtain it. This says a lot about how the devs are looking to balance gunplay in this game. It's not an everything for nothing sort of deal this time around, or just choose a class and the gun for the scenario. Not only will you have to strategize with your team on your class makeup, but you will also have to consider what combat role provides you with the right weapon attachments for not only your playstyle, but with what works for the map and objectives you are taking over or defending. With the progression feature in your company, there was a few questions on how hard the grind will be to advance your soldiers. The great thing is that you will not have to grind multiple times to progress your soldiers, vehicles, and weapons. Leveling is attached to each vehicle and weapon type. So, for example, once you fully level up a tank that plays in specific combat roles, you can simply create another from the armory and spec the new tank with different combat roles in the skill tree. This also goes for leveling up your soldier classes. As I said before, there will likely be a finite amount of loadouts we can create within our company, 
but you won't have to delete a soldier to spec into a new combat role. If you wanted, you could keep the soldier you have in the game and change them to fit the situations you are going into, similar to how we could change our loadout options on any given class in Battlefield 1 mid-game. Some other notes to consider from the AMA was that the dev team is currently not considering a kill switch on cosmetics while in-game. I feel a lot of concerns from the community is the ability to differentiate between enemy and foe with the new cosmetic system being implemented. Ryan stated that each faction will have different visual options to both maintain the fantasy of being in war, as well as ensure visibility between friend and foe. With this answer, I feel that the dev team is confident that even with the cosmetic features of Battlefield 5, that we should be able to determine who is our enemy and who is a friendly. Ryan also stated that they are working on a whole variety of cosmetic items to allow players to represent all aspects for World War II. He couldn't yet communicate on specifics, but they want to be as inclusive as possible for all elements that made up this time in history. It's also important to note that your company is at your player level. The clan or platoon system is a separate feature. Ryan also mentioned that he's most excited about the improved gunplay and the progression and service focused design that is intended to create a more living experience throughout the game. And that's about it for information we have on your company within Battlefield 5. I hope this helped clear up any questions that you may have had and showcased how this system will work. We don't know exactly how the layout of the company will work just yet, but I'm sure once we get our hands on the beta in early September, we'll have a better understanding of how everything will function from a visual perspective. What are you most excited about in the upcoming Battlefield tile? Are you still concerned about being able to differentiate from friend and foe? Let us know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then give us a like and subscribe for future gaming content and updates. Till next time gamers, this is Sir Mav, signing off.